أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمنا بنور الفهم وأنم علينا يا عظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قول أما بعد All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace be upon his beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I testify that there is no God except Allah Almighty and I testify that Muhammad is the prophet and the messenger of Allah and my brothers and sisters in Islam it's a great pleasure and honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that from the many people and from the many Muslims that live around this area, around this mosque, Allah Azza wa gives us the blessings that He makes us from among those who attend His houses, to attend His house and to be from His guests, to be from those who are in the gathering of knowledge, the gathering of angels, the gathering of tranquility, the gathering of peace, to be from among those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had opened the path of pleasing him. And believe me, my brothers and sisters, not many people get this. Not many people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens to them what's been opening to you. And just to be the guest of Allah is a great honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And last week, we started with the story of the two prophets Prophet Zakaria and Prophet Yahya alayhim as salam. And with that, with that story, the story of Isa alayhi salam is within the story of the Prophet, of the Prophet Zakaria and Yahya. Keep in mind that Yahya and Isa alayhim as salam are cousins. Yahya and Isa alayhim as salam are cousins. Both of their mothers are sisters. Both of their mothers are sisters. Yahya alayhi salam's mother, her name is Ashia. She is the wife of Zakaria and she is the daughter of Imran. And Isa alayhi salam is the son of Maryam, who she is the sister of Ashia, the daughter of Imran. And both of their mothers, their mother Ashia and, uh, and Maryam's mother, uh, mother's name is Hannah. Her name is Hannah. And we mentioned how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the mother of Maryam, Hannah, with a child. And she made a pledge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she made a vow to Allah Almighty, that if Allah azza wa jal grants her a male or a baby boy child, she will make this pledge. She will, the pledge was that this child will be in the service of Bayt al-Maqdis. And this is what the people before the righteous people used to do before is when they used to have a child a baby boy child they used to make the pledge that this child will be under the service of Masjid al-Aqsa or uh, Bayt al-Maqdis Afwan which the Masjid al-Aqsa of course existed at that time and the one that established Masjid al-Aqsa is Yaqub alayhi salam they used to make the pledge that the child will be under the service of the temple and they used to name it as the temple and they used to, and they make the pledge that this child will be serving the leaders or the religious leaders of the temple. When Hannah gave birth, she gave birth to a female and that was Maryam alayhi salam. And Hannah had made a vow, she made a promise that if she gets a child, she's going to make this child or put this child under the service of Bayt al-Maqdis. But now this child is a female, and usually females don't go and not put in a position of serving the Bayt al-Maqdis. And her husband is Imran, he used to be the head of the leaders of Bayt al-Maqdis. She asked him, he used to be a righteous religious leader. She asked him, what should we do? He said, since you made that pledge, you should continue with that pledge. Even though that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given you a female instead of a male, or a female than a male, and you made the pledge, you have to continue with the pledge. And she did continue with the pledge, and she put Maryam alayhi salam in the service of Bayt al-Maqdis. 
And we mention how Zakaria alayhi salam was the guardian of Maryam. For each child that used to be under they used to be in the service of Bayt al Maqdis, they used to be a guardian, they used to be a mentor. And the guardian and the mentor of Maryam alayhi salam was Zakaria. And Zakaria saw the piety of Maryam and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed this child. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Quran Kareem. كلما دخل عليها زكريا المحراب وجد عندها رزقا. Every time Zakaria will enter the mihrab, the place of worship, he'll see an amazing provision, amazing food, fruits. But the fruits that he used to see are the fruits of winter in summer and the fruits of summer in winter. And out in the market, where can you get such fruits? It's winter. How are you going to get the fruits of summer? And it's summer. How can you get the fruits of winter? So he asked her, Anna laki hada. Where did you get these fruits from? He's been getting this fruit to you. And no one enters this room except me. She said, This is from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sustains whoever he was. When Zakaria saw that, and he was at the age of 100, he was 100 years old, or some scholars say he was 90 years old, and no child, his wife was barren, that never used to fall pregnant, and the scholars say he was 100 years old, and his wife was 90 years old. Zakaria at that moment, he becomes so eager to have a child. So passionate to have a child. Seeing that righteousness from this young woman, this young girl, Maryam alayhi salam, he loved to have a child, being pious as, as the piety of Maryam alayhi salam. So he made that dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah azza wa jal sent the news to him, the revelation that Allah will grant him a child. He said, Ya Allah, how am I going to have a child? How was my wife going to have a child when she does not fall pregnant? I'm an old man. So Allah Azza wa said, Inna Allah yaf'alu ma yasha. Allah does whatever he wills. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the sign that the sign that he'll know that his wife fell pregnant and she is soon to give birth is when he can't utter with a word speaking to people. And la tukallima nasa thalathata ayam in sawiyah. You would not speak to people for three nights. You would not speak to people for three nights. The sign that your wife falls, will fall pregnant is that, she, that you will not speak for three nights or three executive days. And then the day came in which he's in the temple worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reading and supplicating to Allah. When he came to speak to people, he can't utter with a word. The, the tongue moves, but there's no sound. And then he realized that's a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For three executive days, Zakaria alayhi salam can't speak. When he comes to supplicating to Allah, when he comes to the worship, the voice comes out. When he comes to communicating with people, there's no voice. So that was the sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Zakaria that your wife is pregnant. And yes, his wife Ashia fell pregnant and she gave birth to not only a righteous child, but she gave birth to a prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran Kareem, فَنَادَتْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَهُوَ قَائِمٌ يُصَلِّ فِي الْمِحْرَابِ أَنَّ اللَّهِ يُبَشِّرُكَ بِيَحْيَى مُصَدِّقًا بِكَلِمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَسَيِّدًا وَحَصُورًا وَنَبِيًّا مِّنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Allah says in the Quran Kareem, the angels called upon Zakaria alayhi salam when he was in the mihrab, the place of worship, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs you of a child by the name of Yahya. Another verse Allah says, Lam Allahu min qablu samiyya. No one was ever named Yahya before. So that name Yahya was the first ever to be, that child Yahya alayhi salam was the first ever to be named. That name Yahya, no one has ever been named Yahya before. Musaddiqan min Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He's been approved word from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And he's a leader A leader that Allah azza wa jalla will make him lead his tribe, his people Wahasura. Hasura means he would not get married He would never get married Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him live the life of bachelors Single Not because Allah azza wa jalla took away the desires of women from him As some people might interpret that But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah Azza wa Jalla had written on him that he would never get married. Same as Isa alayhi salam. 
and he's also a prophet, Yahya alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Quran al-Kareem, فَخَرَجَ عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ مِنَ الْمِحْرَابِ فَأَوْحَىٰ إِلَيْهِمْ أَنْ سَبِّحُوا بُكْرَةً وَعَشِيَّةً He came out to his people from the place of worship and he signified to them. He made the sign. He can't speak. And سَبِّحُوا بُكْرَةً وَعَشِيَّةً Glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the day and night. And then Allah Azza wa says, يَا يَحْيَىٰ خُذِ الْكِتَابَ بِقُوَّةً وَآتَيْنَاهُ الْحُكْمَ صَبِيَّةً Allah Azza wa says, O Yahya, and Yahya is known to be the name of John. They call him John. Take or hold fast on the scripture, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَآتَيْنَاهُ الْحُكْمَ صَبِيَّةً And we had given him the wisdom when he was young, when he was a child. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given the wisdom to Yahya alayhi salam when he was a child. Yahya alayhi salam in a young age, three, four, five, six years old, he had the wisdom of adults. He had the wisdom of prophets and messengers. That's been narrated that once a group of kids came to Yahya alayhi salam saying to him, come and play with us. Let's get out and play like the rest of the kids and children. So Yahya alayhi salam said, we weren't created to play. In a young age. We weren't created to play. From the, young, from the young age when children just look forward to play and run around, Yahya alayhi salam had the wisdom and understanding of the purpose of his creation, in which is to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. Oh Yahya, let's go out to play in a young age saying, Ma lillahi khuliqna. We weren't created to play. We weren't created to play. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, Wa hananan min ladunna wa zaka wa kana taqiyya and compassion from our presence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him that compassion. Allah Azza wa Jal had given him that understanding. Wazakata and purity. Clean, pure from any sin. Pure and clean from any sin. And he was pious. Allah Azza wa Jal had given the piety to Yahya alayhi salam from a young age. Not many prophets had that. Not many prophets had that piety. And understanding and wisdom, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given to Yahya alayhi salam. وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَيْهِ And dutiful towards his parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made Yahya alayhi salam being dutiful towards his parents and understanding and the importance of the parents of is- in Islam. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ جَبَّارًا عَصِيًّا And he would not be arrogant or rebellious. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ جَبَّارًا عَصِيًّا He will not be an arrogant or rebellious. This is Yahya alayhi salam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَسَلَامٌ عَلَيْهِ يَوْمَ وَلِدَ وَيَوْمَ يَمُوتُ وَيَوْمَ يُبْعَثُ حَيَّا وَسَلَامٌ عَلَيْهِ And peace be on to him, Yahya alayhi salam, from Allah azza wa jal. From the day he was born, وَيَوْمَ يَمُوتُ And the day he will die, وَيَوْمَ يُبْعَثُ حَيَّا And the day he'll be resurrected. This is Yahya alayhi salam. And you look at this great description from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Yahya alayhi salam, the son of Zakariya. Zakariya alayhi salam for years and decades asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a child and then at the age in which Zakariya knows himself he can't have a child, Allah azza wa jalla gave him not a child and not any child but the best of children. Yahya alayhi salam. Yahya alayhi salam. And there was once a dialogue between Yahya and Isa in which Yahya said, Yahya asked Isa to make dua for him. He said, you are better than me. Yahya told Isa, make dua for me and ask Allah to forgive me. You are better than me. So Isa said, no, you are better than me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mentioned the peace of him upon you. When he said, وَسَلَامٌ عَلَيْهِ And I mentioned peace upon, upon myself. وَسَلَامٌ عَلَيْهِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran al-Kareem about Yahya and peace be upon him. When describing of Yahya alayhi salam. About Isa, when Isa spoke, when he was a baby, he said, وَسَلَامٌ عَلَيْهِ said, and peace be upon me. So he, Allah azza wa jal, is the one that said, peace be upon Yahya. And on Isa, Isa said about himself, peace be upon me. And that's why Isa said, you are better than me. You are better than me. But the scholars say, Isa is, uh, in, uh, Isa is greater than Yahya alayhi salam. But this is the humbleness between the prophets and the messengers. And Yahya alayhi salam grew up. And three months after 
the birth of Yahya, it was the birth of Isa alayhi salam, which is the separate story that we'll talk about. Yahya alayhi salam, as Allah azza wa jal mentioned and promised, was Sayyida as a leader to his people and a messenger and a prophet to his people. Yahya alayhi salam was a great messenger and leader to his people. And he was calling to the call of Islam. And people respected Yahya at that time. Bani Israel, the children of Israel, in which there were Muslims living in Asham. And the scholars say Yahya alayhi salam at that time was in Damascus. Some scholars say he was in Jerusalem. But at the end of the day, that's all Asham at that time. Yahya alayhi salam calling his people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reminding them of Allah azza wa jal. And Yahya alayhi salam earned a lot of respect in the heart of his people. And Zakariya alayhi salam was the father of Yahya. So there were the two main leaders and the two main prophets and messengers, including Isa alayhi salam, in which people used to look up to and respect. And Yahya alayhi salam, as I mentioned, in that respect, and people had any fatwa, any questions, any queries in regards of the religion, they'll go back to Yahya and Zakariya alayhi salam. There's not much about the life of Yahya alayhi salam except what's been narrated to us, how Yahya alayhi salam passed away. And Yahya alayhi salam was killed and was killed for a very evil and ugly cause. Yahya, as I mentioned, was respected among his people. And when it comes to religion, religious matters, they go back to Yahya alayhi salam. And at that time, there was a tar ruler from Bani Israel. And as it is that we have many Muslim leaders these days, they say they're Muslims and that, but at the end of the day, they do actions that maybe a non-Muslim would not even do. Same thing back then, there was their leaders from Bani Israel, they say we are Israelis and we believe in Islam and we follow Yahya and the teachings of Yahya and Zakaria. But at the end of the day, it's what their desires cause them for is what they do. And that leader, that king, he fell in love with his niece. And it's haram for someone to marry his niece. And this is a, our religion too. It's in Islam that it's haram to marry the daughter of your sister or your brother. And back then also in the Sharia of Yahya alayhi salam, it is haram for someone to marry their niece. So the king fell in love with his niece and his niece was an evil woman. And they say that she was also a prostitute. She was an evil woman and she used to do evil actions. And when the king fell in love with her, she became also eager to become the queen. You know, this is a good opportunity for her to fulfill her desires by being the wife of the king. Now how is she going to get married to him when it's haram in their religion? And if Yahya says this is haram, the people rebel against the king and the kingdom. This man is committing a very evil action. So she sent for a fatwa to Yahya alayhi salam, asking him, is it permissible for her to get married to her uncle, which is the king? So obviously Yahya said, no, haram. And some narration says that fatwa was also sent to Zakaria alayhi salam. And he said also it's haram. How is she going to fulfill her desire? And the narration says that one night she was with her uncle. And she started to play on her uncle, which is the king. And she trying to attract him. When he came near her, she said no. It's haram because Yahya says no. It's haram. And what's the solution? She said, I would not let you go near me until you get me the head of Yahya as my dowry. The head of Yahya as my dowry. So that king with that hyped up desire and arrogance and pride, he sent his troops out to Yahya alayhi salam and they went behind Yahya and they killed Yahya alayhi salam and chopped his head off and brought the head of Yahya on a golden plate to the niece of the king as a dowry. And who objected? Zakaria alayhi salam. And the also the, the soldiers of the king were sent behind Zakaria alayhi salam to kill him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Zakaria in which a tree opened up for Zakaria when he was running in the jungle. He hid in that tree. But Iblis la'anatullah alayhi as some of the narrations that some of the scholars say it's even weak, 
So some of the scholars say it's weak narrations that Zakaria alayhi salam hid in the tree and Iblis lanatullah alayhi grabbed the side of his cloth and left it out in the open that when the soldiers came, Iblis came in the form of a human being and he said, can't you see the garment of Yahya out? Get a saw and cut this tree open and that's when you kill Zakaria alayhi salam. So Zakaria alayhi salam and Yahya were killed for the most evilness reasons that you could think of for a niece that's wanting to get married to her uncle or the king uncle for the sake of desires and that was the end of Yahya alayhi salam and they and Yahya alayhi salam as the scholars say passed away in the age of 30 or 31 and Zakaria passed away the age of 130 as some of the scholars say some say more some say less Who's around? Isa alayhi salam. Isa that time was 30 years old. And coming to the story of Isa alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a full story about Isa alayhi salam and his mother Maryam. His mother Maryam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the story of Maryam. As we mentioned, she was born from her mother Hannah and her father Imran. And Maryam alayhi salam, for her young child age, childhood, growing up in a place of worship, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Maryam had that respect. Maryam had that respect of being a pious person. And everyone used to speak about the piety of Maryam alayhi salam. Everyone used to speak about the righteousness of Maryam alayhi salam. She was only 15 years old and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appeared the miracles on her hands. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appeared miracles that existed on her hands that people did not see before. And of course, when things like this occur, you always get the jealous people. Especially religious people get jealous from other religious people sometimes. And Maryam alayhi salam, Maryam alayhi salam, a lot of the religious leaders at that time were jealous from her. She's a child and people have respect towards her more than us as the elderly and senior Leaders and Maryam alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best of women, the best of women is Maryam and the best of women is Khadija. And Maryam alayhi salam was from the best of women, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, many men became perfect and not many women became perfect from those perfect women. Uh, Maryam, the daughter of Imran, Asia, the wife of Fir'aun, Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad, and Khadija, bint Khuwailid, the wife of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Maryam, alayhi salam, she was a pious woman. She was not a prophet or a messenger. One of the conditions of prophets and messengers is that the prophets and messengers are males. There's no such thing called a female prophet and a messenger. There's no such thing called a female prophet and a messenger. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَإِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَاكِ وَطَهَّرَكِ وَاصْطَفَاكِ عَلَى نِسَاءِ الْعَالَمِينَ When the angels called upon Maryam and said, Oh Maryam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had chosen you. And Allah azza wa jal had purified you. And Allah azza wa jal had chosen you over all the women of the world. And Maryam is a chosen woman, a chosen female by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah Azza wa says, Ya Maryam uqnuti li rabbiki wasjudi warka'i ma'ar raka'in. Oh Maryam, surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surrender to Allah your Lord and prostrate to him and bow with those who bow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Maryam is a chosen woman, not any other, not any woman, but she's a chosen woman by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which Allah Azza wa Jal had chosen her and chosen his son. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the hadith that the shaitan will touch every baby that's born except to Maryam and his son Isa. Shaitan did not touch them. Every baby that's born, shaitan will try and take a portion from them while they're born except Maryam and Isa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected them 
from that and that goes back to her to the dua of her mother when she said wa inni u'idhuha bika wa dhurriyyataha min ash-shaytan ar-rajim man ya Allah I ask you to protect her and her descendants from the accursed shaytan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had protected him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Quran al-Karim wa dhkur fi al-kitab and remember in the book Maryam idh intabadhat min ahliha makanan sharqiyya and remember Maryam in the book when she isolated her people into a eastern side. And that's referring to Bayt al-Maqdis. She was in Bayt al-Maqdis. Maryam alayhi salam was Bayt al-Maqdis and she was in the place of temple. And she had the mihrab, a room for herself in which she used to constantly worship Allah azza wa jal and be mentored and taken care of by Zakaria alayhi salam. إذ انتبذت وذكر في الكتاب مريم إذ انتبذت من أهلها مكانا شرقيا فأرسلنا إليها روحنا فتمثل لها بشرا سويا We sent to her روح Who's the روح here? جبريل عليه السلام جبريل عليه السلام was sent by Allah سبحانه وتعالى to مريم And he came in a form of a human being بشرا سويا A perfect human being a perfect human being that there is no difference. There is no difference between him and any other human being. Bashar and Sawiya, a perfect human being. You look at him, he's a normal human being. فَتَمَثَّلَ لَهَا بَشَرًا سَوِيَّ And she was shocked. No one ever comes into that room. And no one has access to that room except Zakaria. So when she saw him, she said, إِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّا أَعُوذُ Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect me, the most merciful from you and fear Allah and leave me alone. She was shocked to see a stranger in that room. No one usually comes into the room. Only Zakaria alayhi salam comes and has access to her. And out of nowhere this strange human being comes. How did he enter this room and where did he come from? So she was so afraid. She was so surprised to see this human being. And she said, ask Allah to protect me from you. In kunta taqiyya. So he responded back to her and said, قَالَ إِنَّمَا أَنَا رَسُولُ رَبِّكِ لِأَهَبَ لَكِ غُلَامًا زَكِيَّ He said, I am only a messenger from your Lord. To tell you, that, to tell you the news that Allah will be granting you a pure and purified child. And could you imagine that scene? Maryam, 15 years old, an innocent child who's constantly worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal in a closed room. No one ever comes and out of nowhere, this strange man comes in. How did he come in? Where did he get access to, this, to Maryam alayhi salam? And then he tells her, I am the messenger of Allah. And that was Jibreel alayhi salam. لِأَهَبَ لَكِ غُلَامًا زَكِيَّةً To tell you that Allah Azza wa Jal will grant you a righteous and a pure child, a purified child. So Maryam was shocked, was amazed. قالت, How, how is it possible for me to have a child? ولم يمسسني بشر ولم أكو بغية And no man had ever came near me. Subhanallah, it's nature of mankind that a male and female need to get together for a child. But Maryam is saying, no one came near me. No man had came near me and I've never committed the wrongdoings. I've never had an evil doings or any illegal sex or haram sex. How can I fall pregnant with a child? How is how's that possible? So she was amazed when this angel Jibreel alayhi salam comes in the form of a human being and tells her that Allah Azza wa is going to grant you a child. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make you fall pregnant and you're going to give birth to a child. And she's saying, I've never been near a man. And I've never committed the zina, and I've never, never committed adultery or fornication or haram, and I'm not even married, or no man had even gone near me. So she's so surprised. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran Kareem that this is from Allah. He said, Angel Jibreel told Maryam alayhi salam, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You've got no option. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had ordained. Huwa alayya hayyin. It's huwa alayya hayyin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is an easy matter. What's so hard? 
If Allah is going to create Isa from a mother, will Allah created Adam from no mother and father? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran Kareem, the, the example of Isa is the example of Adam. If Isa alayhi salam is so amazing of him coming from a mother and no father, then Adam is more amazing. He came from no mother and father. Huwa alayya hayyan. وَلِنَجْعَلَهَا آيَةً لِلنَّاسِ And we're going to make him a remember, a, an example, a miracle to people which people will see. People will see and hear of. This is a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَكَانَ أَمْرًا مَقْضِيًّا As Allah Azza wa says, and it's an ordained matter. That's it. There's no debating, arguing, trying to prove something. Allah had ordained that you're going to have a child. And that child is going to be a purified as a righteous, pious, God-fearing child. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make you have that child without a husband, without a man, without... Is this child is going to have no father. These are the miracles from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what's, what's so amazing of that? What's so amazing? Allah creates whoever He wants, however He wants. And Allah azza wa created Adam from no mother and father. Will Allah create Isa alayhi salam from a mother and no father? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says... In other verse, Allah Azza wa Sayyid, فَنَفَخْنَا فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِنَا Allah Azza wa Jal blew into Maryam alayhi salam or made Jibreel, the, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran al-Kareem, Jibreel alayhi salam blew into Maryam and the scholars say he blew into her garment from the opening of her garment and she fell pregnant. The scholars disagree with one another how long she was Pregnant for, she was pregnant for days, months, weeks. But the majority of scholars say that she was pregnant, a normal pregnancy, in which Maryam alayhi salam fell pregnant like a normal pregnancy and for the number of normal, uh, uh, the, the period of normal pregnancy, which is nine months. When Maryam alayhi salam, when Maryam alayhi salam, she knew, she saw the pregnancy start to appear on her. She's amazed. Like it's a shocking thing for her. Subhanallah. How is she going to face people? If she's going to go out with a body of a pregnant woman, what people are going to look at her and say? This is the righteous, pious, God-fearing Mary, Maryam that we talk about. She's pregnant, but she's not married. Straight away, people are not going to say, there's a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here. Angel Jibreel came down. And he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted this miracle. And if she's going to say that to people, people are not going to accept it from her. Straight away, people will assume that this woman had committed the fahsha, had committed the zina. She had committed a munkar. She had committed evil doings. She had committed adultery or fornication. She had committed an illegal sex. And this is something that Maryam was so upset, so compassionate about. How was she going to face her people when they see her pregnant? So what did she do? She went to a isolated place. She, walked, she left the temple and she went out of the Beit al Maqdis. She went out of the city. And she went to an isolated place where there was a dead palm tree. And she sat under the palm tree. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran al-Kareem, فَأَجَاءَهَا الْمَخَادُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says that the contraction of, uh, of birth came to her. She started to feel that she's going to give birth. While she was leaning her back to the palm tree, she started to get the contractions. When she got this, when she started to get the contractions, she started to say, Ya laytani mittu qabla hadha. I wish I was dead before this time. Wa kuntu nasiya man I was a forgotten person. How am I going to face people? They're going to see me. I'm the, everyone, everyone looks at me and respects me as being the right. was good, God-fearing female. And I'm going to come with a child. People straight away are going to accuse me of evil doings, wrong doings. So she started to make dua saying, I wish I was dead before this matter. And I was a forgotten person. She still then, or she still didn't realize the miracle from behind what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the wisdom from behind this. And Allah 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made someone call her. And all the scholars disagree. They say it's Isa alayhi salam who called her from beneath her. Some scholars say it's Jibreel alayhi salam. Some scholars say it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he called her from beneath her. Allah tahzani. Don't be stressed. Don't be upset. قَدْ جَعَلَ رَبُّكِ تَحْتَكِ سَرِيَّةً Allah Azza wa Jal had provided a rivulet for you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising you something. This is the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's something coming. Something that you don't realize now but you realize later. وَهُزِّ إِلَيْكِ بِجِذْعِ النَّخْلَةِ تُسَاقِطْ عَلَيْكِ رُطَبًا جَنِيَّةً Obviously she's hungry. and When a pregnant woman is, when a woman is pregnant, she becomes more hungry. Doesn't she need to eat? She was leaning her back on a dead palm tree. There's no palms in it. Allah Azza wa said, Who's the Shake that palm tree. And obviously, she can't shake it that strong, but shake it or touch it. To saq it alayka rutab and you see fresh dates falling to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made fresh dates fall to her to eat from those dates. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Azza wa Jal had also made a flowing river, a flowing stream, a flowing stream go from past her, in which Allah says, فَكُلِي وَشْرَبِي وَقَرِّ عَيْنَا Now you've got food, and you've got this water, so eat and drink, وَقَرِّ عَيْنَا and be delighted, calm down, relax. قَرِّ عَيْنَا is relax. In Arabic, and it let your eyes be delighted. It means relax, calm down, be comfortable. This is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِمَّا تَرَيِّنَّ مِنَ الْبَشَرِ أَحَدًا فَقُولِي إِنِّي نَظَرْتُ لِلرَّحْمَانِ صَوْمًا فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمِ إِنْسِيَ And whoever goes past, and whoever wants to speak to you, say, you are fasting from speaking to anyone. Don't speak to anyone. And when you give birth to this child, obviously people are going to ask you questions. How did you give birth to this child? Who, who's the father of this child? And all these rumors, then speak. So Allah Azza wa Jal had ordered her not to speak. And this is becoming even more harsh on her. And people going to see me with a child? They're going to say, with this child from? Then I need to explain myself. Allah said, then explain, then speak. Whoever speaks to you, just say, I'm fasting from speaking. Rely on Allah Azza wa Jal and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do. And this is the ikhwani, this is the hikmah of Allah Azza wa Jal. Sometimes you might go through hardships and you go through th- three things that you see it from the outside. How is this going to happen? But Allah makes it in a different way. How is this going to be interpreted? But Allah Azza wa Jal interprets it in a different way. How Allah Azza wa Jal, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants it will be. So you look at it and you, sometimes you don't accept it because logically or because of your, uh, your nafs or because of yourself, you find it hard to accept. But there's always a wisdom and hikmah from behind it. So he, Maryam alayhi salam, after she gave birth, people are going to ask her, well, whose child is he and who's the father of that child? What are you committing? What did you do? Allah told, don't even say a word. Don't explain. And this is where Allah tests us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us to see do we stand firm and obey Allah or do we disobey him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now after Maryam alayhi salam gave birth to Isa alayhi salam, Maryam now comes back. She left the city with no child, not married. She comes back with a child. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَأَتَتْ بِهِ قَوْمَهَا تَحْمِلُ She arrived to her people carrying this child. People are shocked. This is Maryam, the righteous woman, Maryam. Everyone speaks about the piety and the respect and the righteousness of Maryam. قَالُوا يَا مَرْيَمْ لَقَدْ جِئْتِ شَيْئًا فَرِيَّةً Oh Maryam, this is your child. This is an amazing thing. What's happening here? What's going on? You, out of all people, at the back of their mind, did she commit zina? Did she do haram? Did she fall into the evil doings? But could it be possible Maryam will do something like that? لَقَدْ جِئْتِ شَيْئًا فَرِيَّةً يَا أُخْتَ هَارُونَ مَا كَانَ أَبُوكِ مْرَأَ سَوْءٍ وَمَا كَانَتْ أُمُّكِ بَغِيَّةً Or the sister of Harun. And the scholars interpret that in different interpretations. Some scholars say she had a brother by the name of Harun. And some scholars say that Harun is a that righteous prophet that people used to refer to. How sometimes say, you know, people say you are the brother of, uh, you, are the, uh, you are the brother of this thing. 
Although it's not your brother or he's not your brother, but because there's a relation. And because Maryam was pious and Harun was a pious man that people always speak about, so they said the sister of Harun. Oh, the sister of Harun. Your father is Imran. He's our leader. He's our religious leader. We respect, respect him. He was never a bad man. And your mother was never, was never unchaste. Your mother was never a bad woman or evil doing woman. How could you be like this? In other words, at the back of their mind, they're just thinking that this Maryam just committed an evil doings. And Maryam alayhi salam, obeying Allah, don't speak. She didn't say a word. Everyone's looking at her. The whole city is gained up on Maryam. Seeing Maryam with a child and everyone just pointing their fingers at Maryam. This is the righteous woman, Maryam. What is she doing with the child? She's not married. Where did she get this child from? And Maryam is keeping quiet because Allah ordered her to stay quiet, to fast from speaking, then say a word. So what did she do? فأشارت إلي. She pointed at Isa. فأشارت إلي. She pointed at Isa. Then speak to me. Speak to him. Speak to who? To a baby? Speak to a baby that's just a few days old? This baby can't even move a finger. How is he going to speak? فأشارت إلي. قالوا كيف نكلم من كان في المهدي صبيا How are we going to speak to a child that's still in the cradle? How are we going to speak to a child that's just born? Are you making fun of us? And Maryam points at Isa, this little baby, this child, speak to him. Don't speak to me, speak to him. And then the great miracle takes place in which Allah Azza wa Jal will make this child that's only a few days old to speak out and say, قال and the two, Isa alayhi salam. Inni Abdullah. I am the servant of Allah. Atani al kitab. He had given me the revelation. Waja'alani nabiya. And he had made me a prophet. Waja'alani mubarakan aina ma kunt. And Allah had blessed me wherever I am. Wa awsani bis salati. Wa zakati ma dum tu hayya. And he ordered me to pray and to pay zakat. As long as I am alive. And to be dutiful to my mother. And he's never made me, an, and he would not make me an overbearing or a miserable, arrogant child or a person, an arrogant person. And peace be on me. From the day I was born. And the day that I'll die. And the day that I'll be resurrected alive. Everyone just heard that few days old baby speak out with words that an adult maybe can't even put together. And everyone just heard that. They saw Maryam carry that. All those doubtful things that were in their mind was cleared up with Isa alayhi salam when he was a baby. He spoke out. Inni Abdullah, I am the servant of Allah. And that's the first thing he spoke. Inni Abdullah, I am the servant of Allah. Not the son of Allah. The servant of Allah. Look at the hikmah, ikhwan, and the wisdom. He, the first thing he spoke is, I am the servant of Allah. And a servant of Allah can't be Allah himself. And he can't be son of Allah. How can you be a servant on Allah? At the same time, it's impossible. It's imp How can you be an employer and an employee at the same time? It doesn't happen, ikhwan. You order yourself. He is the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not the son of Allah, not Allah. He is the servant of Allah like everyone else. Inni Abdullah, atani al-kitab. Allah had given me the revelation from that age. Waja'alani nabiyya, and he made me a prophet. Waja'alani mubarakan, I am blessed wherever I am. Aina ma kunt, wa awsani bis salati wa zakati madum tuhayya. And he had ordained me and... And Allah Azza had ordered me to pray and pay zakat as long as I'm alive. And this is where, ikhwani, as long as you are alive, you must pray to Allah. As long as something is alive in you, you must continue praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي And my mother. I have a duty towards my mother and I have to be kind towards her. وَلَمْ يَجْعَنِّي جَبَّارًا شَقِيًّا And I'm not will be, and Allah did not make me an overbearing but Allah Azza wa did not make me an arrogant person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, That's Isa ibn Maryam. 
That's Isa ibn Maryam, the son of Maryam. قول الحق الذي فيه يمترون. This is the reality of Isa. This is the reality of Isa. He is not the son of Allah. He is not Allah himself. He is a human being. Allah had created him from a mother and a father. And that does not make him anything more than a human being. قول الحق. This is the truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الذي فيه يمترون. They've been disputing over that. And that dispute to this day exists. That Isa is the son of God. Isa is a God himself. Isa is whatever. Every day they come up with something about Isa. Alayhi salam. قول الحق. The truth that Isa is the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ما كان لله أن يتخذ من ولد سبحانه. Allah azza wa jal. It does not befit him to take a child. Subhanah, glory be to Allah Azza wa Jal. How could this be possible to Allah? Allah would not accept it for himself, for us to accept it to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِذَا قَضَى أَمْرًا فَإِنَّمَا يَقُولُ لَا كُنْ فَيَكُنْ When Allah had ordained an aura, all Allah says, كُنْ be it happens. And Allah Azza wa Jal had ordered Isa to be and he happened. And Allah Azza wa Jal had ordered him to be a child from a father and a mother. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made that happen. Allah made him. Allah created him from a mother and a father and it happened. And Allah Azza wa had ordered him to speak in an age that no children speak or babies speak. And it happened. And Allah Azza wa Jal will do whatever he will subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِذَا قَضَى أَمْرًا فَإِنَّمَا يَقُولُ لَهُ كُنْ when Allah Azza wa orders an order, all he says is, be and it happens. Be and it happens. And Allah Azza says, إِنَّمَا مَثَلُ عِيسَى بْنُ إِنَّمَا مَثَلُ عِيسَى كَمَثَلِ آدَم The example of Isa, example of Adam. The example of Isa is the example of Adam. If Isa is so amazing that he was born without a father, then Adam is more amazing. He was born with no mother or father. Why don't you take Adam as a lord? Adam then should be taken as a lord more than Isa if that's your argument Allah says he created him from clay then Allah told him be it happened Allah created Adam from clay Allah ordered him to be and it happened and Allah created Isa alayhi salam Allah told him be and it happened this is Isa alayhi salam Yes, a great miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I appeared on the hands of Maryam alayhi salam and inshallah with the story of Isa and Maryam to continue next week. May Allah azza wa jalla make us from those who listen here and act upon what they listen here. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. May Allah reward you. And inshallah we'll continue with the story next week. To listen to or download more Islamic lectures, please visit www.islamicmedia.com.au.